Hey, thanks for joining us at the A10 booth. We're gonna talk about DDoS, right? A, a, a systemic problem that uh, exists inside of all of our uh, businesses. And so we're gonna talk about the three most rampant types and then talk about what do you do about it, okay? And that's probably the most important portion of it. Today, we have a real problem because the, the challenges or the cost of, in, of instigating a DDoS attack has become so simple and so easy. And you know, this very low cost today, Attribution-wise, one-third of all downtime inside of um, IT infrastructure is related to DDoS now, right? And so that that's a kind of shows what the problems that exist. And another real big problem, even though this problem's been around for a long time, is the fact that at IT departments are still taking three to five hours in order to be able to detect that they're under attack and then start remediation, right? And then, of course, it, it's all about operational cost, the opportunity loss, what are you losing from a revenue perspective, right? So for those of us that need a little bit more background, so what is a DDoS attack, right? And so DDoS attack is the most popular weapon that's being used by cyber criminals. And the most important thing is, is what it attacks from the security triad is the avail availability side of it, right? And, and for all of us, that's the first step in running a business. But the thing that we need to understand is, is that Today, when we're talking about DDoS attacks, it's not you against an attacker. It's you against a whole ecosystem of motivated attackers that are contracting or renting DDoS for higher services that have accumulated um, weapons in the form of botnets, as well as we'll talk a little bit more about all those compute nodes that are sitting on the internet with terrible security hygiene that, that are being used for DDoS attacks and reflected amplification attacks in particular a delivery mechanism, and then, of course, all of us as far as, as a victim or being the target of the victim or the collateral damage that's infected, affected on us when, during a DDoS attack. And interestingly enough, anybody read uh, Verizon's DBIR, right? No? Oh, I love reading that thing, right? So they, they, they go through the incidents through the whole year that their forensics team analyzed, and it turns out that two-thirds of all the incidents that Verizon investigated from their enterprise customers were DDoS related. Right? Pretty, pretty striking how terrible it really is. So when we talk about DDoS attacks, one strategy is what's called volumetric attacks, right? And this is where these floods of unwanted traffic are directed at your network, right? And, and we commonly think of these from a botnet sending a lot of traffic, but the reality is the vast majority of attacks actually happen this way which is called a reflected amplification attack, where the attacker spoofs your IP address, sends it to the millions of servers that are out there that will respond the way that it was designed to do, but send an amplified version of that. And so open DNS would be one example of what that would be. Um, and so this is, this is the most, you know, one of the ways. Then the next, next attack strategy is network-based attacks, right? This is a resource exhaustion Things like what you hear about, like sin floods, as an example, that would be considered a network um, type of an attack. And then the last category is where it becomes more targeted towards what it's going after, and this is the application layer attack, right? And so, you know, sort of the simple case would be web servers where your um, repetitive gets or, or puts kind of thing like that, okay? Um, now, however, the reality is that today, almost all attacks are multi-vector in nature, meaning they're using at least two in many instances, at least four different attack strategies in order to be able to go through the defenses. Now, so, so, so that's kind of the reality. The other thing that we need to think about is, is where did the attack come from? Okay, because um, in the world of DDoS, because it is distributed, we can kind of know. And so this is a map of the weapons um, that, that A10 has inventoried as far as DDoS weapons that are being used that include drones and and uh, uh, amplification sources. And we see that, you know, this is 18 million of these DDoS weapons that are used in DDoS attacks. And so, so when we consider that, right, the thing that I think is, okay, that seems a little unfair, right? One against 18 million, as an example, right? And so now you're under attack, right? You've got this flood of traffic coming in. And so now what do you do, okay? And so, I think that it's kind of like this. Does anybody know what this is? What is this? Where's Waldo, right? 
Um, however, I was in Colombia two weeks ago, and I did the same thing, and they said, donde est Javier? It's not where's Waldo everywhere, but, but nonetheless, this is, this is kind of what it feels like, right? Is you got this huge swell of traffic coming in and you have to figure out what's good and what's bad, right? You need to figure out a methodology behind that. And so here's, here's Waldo in that position, but however, in the world of DDoS, it looks a lot more like this, right? is there's a lot of it coming in that's generating all of this traffic. Now, the thing is, is that kind of like in that game of where is Waldo, as a DDoS defender, you need to think about what is my objective, okay? It's availability of what? It's availability of my service to my legitimate users, right? Users. And then the other portion of it is, is I need to protect my infrastructure. The problem that happens inside, and this is sort of a dirty little secret inside of DDoS defenses, wherever, however you get it, whether you build it or you buy it, is, is that the vast majority of DDoS defense structure uses the second objective of protecting the infrastructure first, okay? Then as an IT guy, I say, well, it didn't fall over. It's not how much of my legitimate users were affected, but it just didn't fall over, right? And so this is one of the problems that exists with it, and what you need is a strategy that does more intelligently distinguish attacking behavior from legitimate users, right? So the question then becomes, what is my methodology that I'm gonna use for choosing good and bad traffic, right? And so what we need to kind of do is step back and think about why would I block traffic, okay, when I'm under a DDoS attack? Well, one of the reasons would be is it behaves different then you're legitimate users, right? It, that's anomalous behavior. The rates are too high. It's, it's accessing things in, a, in an incorrect fashion. It doesn't know how to answer. If you give it a challenge, it doesn't know how to respond correctly. That's a, that's a good reason to block it. The other reason to block it is because this is D, the first D in, in, in DDoS is distributed, what you find is that there's a pattern associated or an energy, really, it's kind of like, um, um, the reverse of entropy, right? Which is there's an energy element in the packet structure that you can identify because of the fact that it's distributed in the attack strategy. So that's another reason that you would block it. And the third reason that you would block it is because it's being used in DDoS attacks other places. Because usually DDoS attacks come in campaigns, the DDoS for higher services are reusing their botnets or their attack agents over and over again. Right? So this becomes the reason of why you should block that. Right? And so the model that becomes important, if your users are important, right? If your service is dependent on your workers getting their work done and customers coming to your, your services in order to be able to revenue, then this is the model that you need to take is from a defensive depth strategy of this tiering of these kinds of reputations so that you're only blocking legitimate use, I'm sorry, um, attacker traffic and being cognizant of the fact that I want I got to protect my users and I have to protect my infrastructure, okay? So, and then the other portion of it that becomes really critical is, is that attackers have automated their strategies. They're using machine learning capabilities. Um, they're using, you know, all of the, the, the innovation that exists that the defenders are using, they're using, and you have to figure, your defense has to be able to respond just as quickly before the attack using machine learning in order to be able to understand what is normal. Right? which is not a simple task to do, and then do this circular or automated process of um, escalating the defense strategies, of layering that multimodal strategies, and then finally defeating it, and then starts generating reports from a forensic perspective. Okay? So um, over on the other side, if DDoS is something that's an important topic for you, and you want to see a demo or something like that, on the back side, we have our SCs over here that are running some demos. So, Please join us over here and good luck in your prize as well.